today's video is going to be part one of a little home renovation series that I'm planning on doing because that is just where my head is at right now. We're currently living in half normal flat like this and then half building site and I've been sharing little daily renovation updates on Instagram stories and it's just actually been really fun to share. The feedback has been amazing. I feel like a lot of you guys are either in the same boat or are buying a doer upper and are going to be in the same boat soon and I just thought it might be helpful to like share our experience, share the progress, share advice and I thought I would kind of give you our home renovation story so far give you the story of the two areas which we're currently doing, which are the bathroom and the hall stairs and landing. Also share with you a before, I took some clips before, I took a clip a week into renovations, and I'm gonna take a clip today, um, because today is currently Saturday, the builders aren't here today, and we're currently two weeks into renovations. And then hopefully in a couple of weeks time, I'll do like a little part two and show you the finished result. And then also to do a Q&A, because I've been getting so many questions about how to find a builder, the worst bits of getting a home renovated, the best bits, what we found expensive, what has been cheaper than we expected. So it's gonna be a long one. Let's get started with the start. <laughs> okay, the story of the flat, which I don't think I've ever told before. Um, but yes, this is our flat. We bought this almost three years ago now, which is kind of nuts. I feel like it was two years ago and you'll see in one of the clips later on, Mark's like, no, it's definitely almost three years. So we never thought we would be able to buy this soon, but just things happened and things escalated and we were able to buy back in 2015. So we had rented our London flat and we came down to Brighton. We would like come down every weekend to look at flats. I think we looked at about 20. We looked at an absolute load and they were sort of all different. Some of them required no work at all. We could have just moved in. Some of them needed a lick of paint. And this one was somewhere definitely more on like that end of renovations. It was livable, it wasn't like there was anything that we had to do before that we moved in, but it needed modernization, it needed updates, it needed rewiring, it needed a new boiler, new carpets, the windows refurbished, like there was quite a long list. And I remember the day we got the keys and we were so excited and our estate agents gave us like champagne, we were like this is literally the best day of our lives. And we walked around and we started to make a list of everything that we needed to do in each room and I just started crying. <laughs> I must have been hormonal, I was like, I'm not sure I am mentally prepared for this. Mark is really into DIY, really handy, so he was always happy to go for that end of the scale. But I kind of wanted something a bit more in the middle to more like, oh, we just have to maybe paint it. But when you've got a budget and you want space for your budget, you sometimes have to go for something that needs a bit of work so we really went on the lower end of our budget so that we had money set aside for furnishing and renovations and yeah it was it was an interesting process we actually had our London flat for two months whilst we also had the keys to this place as well so we come down every weekend and strip wallpaper and we actually got the kitchen redone in that time we got like I think one of the walls needed coming down and to be put back up again and replastered we got that done we got the flat rewired in that time so kind of really big messy jobs we tried to do in those two months but two months isn't very long and we were here every weekend with our friends our family helping us decorate and we were just a bit naive with time these things take so much time especially in here for some reason the wallpaper did, just didn't want to come off and it would literally take us a whole weekend just to get wallpaper off the wall so in the end we got some help with redecorating actually from the builder that we're currently using so we've known this guy for a couple of years and when we moved in the kitchen was basically complete the office bedroom and living rooms were complete but we still had the hallway and the bathrooms to do we were like you know what hallway you kind of do last because obviously you don't want things like scratching while you're taking things up and down i mean like the bathroom we'll do it in like six months it'll be fine but just things don't happen that way you kind of move in you're like oh the bathroom's fine it's not that bad you get used to it money is a thing like you obviously need to save up to do these renovations they take time to plan they take time to do especially when you're working from home so that's why three years in we're still doing these things and that is definitely what i've learned through this process i'll talk about this more in the q a but these things take time and it's okay to be in things that aren't complete you still love it still feels like home so let's talk more about the two projects that we are currently completing which are a hall stairs and landing, you'll see there's new paint on the wall, which is so cool, and the bathroom. So I'll talk about the hallway first, because that's quite an easy, straightforward renovation. It basically needed 
painting and I'm not sure you can really see but there's panelling, this white on the walls are this wooden panelling that needed sanding, it had like loads of nooks and bits in it and bits of paint had flown off so it needed all sanding down, repainting of the woodwork, painting of this midsection, there was a bit of wallpaper that Mark just took off one weekend when he wanted to do some DIY, that needed to go back up, um, painting the ceiling and also they've been painting the doors, that's why this door looks nice and bright and white but our doors needed like refurbishing so painting, new hardware. Quite a simple job when it comes to redecorating aside from the woodwork which Ooh, sanding takes a lot of time. So the bathroom is obviously a bit of a bigger job and you will see this better when I show you the clips later on but we basically have like a small room that they've blocked off which is the toilet that's got the boiler in and at the moment it was just a carpeted ooh, toilet it just had a toilet in didn't have a basin or anything else and then in the other room we had a sink and a bath with a shower over the top. So you'll see this later on in the clips and people in my Instagram stories have been asking why we didn't knock it into one big room but the toilet is very small and it sort of would have made this weird like alleyway <laughs> toilet almost and we would have struggled to have a spot to put a sink on or the size of sink that we want and so we kept it as two separate rooms and we've just tried to re-complete the toilet so now it's going to have a basin in it we're boarding in the boiler that's in there and everything's just going to be tiled white paint on the ceiling and tops of the walls and then in the actual proper bathroom there's going to be a big like not a double sink but like a massive wide sink which i'm so excited about we're going to have like one of those um ikea mirrored cabinets on the top so i can put my products in there and the sink that we've got has drawers underneath as well so it has storage and then we've just got a new bath we're going to keep our old bath and one of the builders that we got in to give a quote was like, don't do it, your old bath will look so yellow and horrible compared to your new sink. Just suck it up, get a new one, get a whole new suite. And again, the same like grey tiles in there, paint on the ceiling and the tops of the walls and... Oh, I was so excited to see the end result. I've had a few questions about how we planned our bathroom renovation, so I'll quickly go through this now. Um, but there was like three things we basically did over the weekends. And the first thing was look for tiles. You kind of need to look for your material. Um, so we ended up just going to local tile showrooms. Um, I'll write the tiles that we got um, down below. I think they're now discontinued, but Mark still seems to be getting hold of them. But they're like a gray polished concrete. And there wasn't really any inspiration pictures in particular we were using. We just kind of went and we're like, yeah, we quite fancy a gray polished concrete -y type tile. That was good. That was within our budget. They weren't crazy expensive. They weren't crazy cheap. They were somewhere in the middle. And so yeah, so first thing we look for, tiles. The second thing that we spent our weekends looking for was actually the bathroom suite. So for us that was a toilet and a mini like corner sink and then a bigger sink for the proper bathroom and also the bath and like shower and all that kind of stuff. And we like, we looked around, I've been to Homebase, B&Q, other local bathroom places. And in the end, we ended up going to Bath Store and I think it was Black Friday. No, it was the, it was the weekend before Black Friday. We went in, they had this amazing deal. And we just sort of, they had a good showroom. They had things that you could try, you know, you could sit in the bath, you could test out all the taps. And we just found a suite that we liked that wasn't crazy expensive. And I was like, look, do we buy it now? Cause it's Black Friday next weekend. And he was like, look, if it goes cheaper in Black Friday, I'll give you the Black Friday price for it. So they were really good on price, did us a great deal. And um, we had actually previously bought the sink unit from Ikea. We went to Ikea one weekend and we were like, we need to start planning our bathroom renovation and just kind of randomly bought the sink. We hadn't bought anything else <laughs> from the bathroom. I wouldn't say we were the most planned when it comes to uh, the bathroom renovation but we've got an Ikea sink, the rest is from Bath Store. The third thing that we did was find people to put it in. Um, Bath Store actually offer a service where they will do it for you. We got them to quote for that and it was very high indeed compared to other quotes that we got. I would say just like look around, get like three to four quotes if you can from different builders. Checker Trade is a really good website, hashtag totally not sponsored. Mark and I have been using this since we moved in and we had no idea what builders to use for anything, like plumbers, electricians, all these various different things. It's basically like TripAdvisor for tradespeople, but in the end we had lots of different quotes come in and in the end we used a builder who we'd used before to do redecorating. He's a plasterer by trade, but he knows people and people kind of come in and do various different things. So in a way he kind of project manages it, which is great, so we're not having to source a tiler, source a plumber, source a plasterer to do the plastering. He kind of does a bit of everything. He's like a jack of all trades and then has extra people come in to do the bits that he can't do. So 
Top tip, if you can find someone who does that, keep their number on speed dial, they're very handy. And then the final step for us to do was to kind of coordinate everything. So coordinate the builder coming in, coordinate the tiles needing picking up, coordinate the bathroom suite being delivered. And once all of those things were in, we got started. So this is the before clip. So here's the before of the hallway. So this is currently like a cream, um, like wood paneling, which we actually really like. We're gonna repaint that a bright white, but you can tell it's just a bit like, nicked and old. This is an area that did have wallpaper on it, but Mark got bored one weekend, wanted to do some DIY, and basically just ripped wallpaper off of this section. We're thinking we're gonna go with kind of a white on all of the woodwork and also like banisters and stairs, and then maybe like a deep blue or a gray or something like that on this middle area, and then again, white on the ceiling, so gonna keep the lights, we love those lights, they're West Elm. That's where Pete the Palm normally goes. He's currently in here with every single piece of furniture that we own. This looks like a very overpacked furniture showroom right now. So in this door here is the bathroom. This is what we used to call the chokey when we moved in because it was this red color and it had little holes in the wall from where the woman before had pictures literally from floor to ceiling. It's a really high room, which is nice, but we're gonna get rid of the carpet because I think carpet in a toilet is interesting to say the least. Uh, the skirting board's gonna go, this is all gonna be tiled. It's got a nice little window there. We actually got a new boiler kind of about, maybe like a year after we moved in because the old boiler was completely shot to pieces. So this is gonna be boxed in, new toilet. This is a very, very old toilet. And then this is like, I mean, we think the original wallpaper, if not the original wallpaper, very, early wallpaper this was behind the old boiler which was pretty cool um so yeah we're gonna have new toilet that boxed in and then in this corner hopefully there's gonna be like a little wash basin which would be nice and maybe like a mirror on the wall just so this can properly be you know a proper bathroom without people having to go to the loo and then go into our other bathroom which is next door so you guys haven't seen a lot of this on camera just because i've kept it off of camera because it's really not my favorite it's completely livable we've lived with this for two years it it was perfectly perfectly fine is it almost three years yeah three years is now we would have bought the place Oh my word. The bath is gonna stay where it is. We've got a new bath coming in, um, but we're gonna keep it there. Hopefully the taps are gonna go like on the wall, so there'll be more of a system on the wall and a very similar sort of shower setup. We'll get a new shower curtain, I'm thinking maybe like a marble, and then the tiles that we used in the mini toilet in here are gonna be in here as well, and it's basically just like a gray, kind of similar almost to what we've got on the floor right now, but it would just be this gray tile. Are we keeping the radiator where it is? There you go, keeping costs down, keeping our radiator in the corner there, but we've got new towels, and um, which is very exciting, but we're saving them for the new bathroom. And then the big change, I mean, look at this. If I step in the bath, this is what is on the other side. Currently, the ceiling, there's holes in it. Someone's like stuffed a bag in, uh, in the corner there, just to fill it. Um, and then here is actually where there was this massive, I'm not sure if we've got any pictures, if we have, I'll insert them here, but there was basically like a massive wooden cabinet, which was really handy for storage, but just a bit big. I mean, you can kind of see it shut off quite a large part of the bathroom. And again, um, this is what Mark fancied doing a bit of DIY, but the idea is that we're getting rid of this sink and we've got a sink unit that's gonna go on this wall. Uh, it's one of the Ikea ones, so it's quite wide. It should basically take up most of the wall and it's got two drawers that go underneath. So we'll be able to put all of our bits and bobs in it, towels in it, which is so exciting. And then on top we'll have an Ikea, you know, one of those like Ikea mirrored cabinets, which means I can finally have all of my skincare in there because this is what I've been doing for about the last six months. All of my skincare is in this drawer and I kind of have to crouch down. Hello, have to crouch down and do it in this broken Ikea mirror. Um, so it's gonna be so fancy to actually have a proper area there to do skincare. This is hopefully gonna look quite unrecognizable in two months time. Okay, here is what the haul is looking like after one week. They've sanded down all of the panels, put undercoats on, um, actually the window, they've done a proper top coat on, but they did it in a satin finish and we completely forgot that all the other woodwork in the flat is an eggshell finish. So we're gonna go out today and get some eggshell paint. They've prepped the doors, they've filled in the holes, which is great. And then as you can see down there, we put a couple more color swatches up on the wall. And we think we like this one. It's called, 
Is it Colour Courage? Le Chagri. And it's kind of, it's grey, but it's like a bluey, tealy grey. And we're into that. I think it looks quite cool because there's going to be so much of this bright white panelling. I think it's quite nice to have a bit of contrast, have something dark. They haven't done anything in the toilet yet, but they have sorted some stuff out in the bathroom, <laughs> sorted some stuff out. They've basically ripped down all the tiles, all the blown plaster, the tile adhesive. So this is all like prepped and ready to go with some new tiles, hopefully in the next week. And then they have plastered the ceiling, plastered this wall here, because this is gonna be painted and kind of tiled to just above where the basin is gonna be. Basin is now gone. <laughs> bath is very unusable um, but yeah they've made a lot of progress this week so week two update and the builder stuff has really spread <laughs> and they've actually taken the mirror down the builder's wife wants this she can have it we've ordered a west elm big old like round mirror to go there but you will notice look at this how amazing is this so they've got the color on the walls they've kind of just slapped it on just to get like a base coat on this is one coat of that color how incredible is that and again, they've just done base coats on all of the woodwork and the doors. We actually bought new handles last week as well. So we will be having new handles very soon. In the little bathroom there has been a bit of progress. They put us a corner sink in. So we now have a corner sink in here. They haven't done anything with this section yet, um, but we are gonna have this like boxed up. Mark's been talking to them this week about what we want there. But yep, a couple of uh, tiles and the sink. This is where the big change has happened. And um, this is an access point that we need to get under the bath, I think for the water, um, and it just needs to be made into an access point. So there will be a tile there, obviously. And also there will be a shower head here. I think there's the shower thing, yep, in there, but it just needs to put up a little like bracket for it. And also the, um, the glass screen, we weren't gonna have one, but they were like, absolutely, you need a glass screen. It was like, no way am I putting up a shower curtain for you. So we need to go buy one of those. But we are so chuffed with these tiles. They just, they look like this kind of, yeah, it's like polished concrete, but they're, they're quite like still bright and reflective. It doesn't feel too dark in here. So they've put our radiator back on for us. And then here, this is the Ikea drawer set, which I just can't believe we're gonna have storage in here. I no longer have to shove towels into drawers that they don't fit in in our bedroom. And then on top of here, this is where the, um, the mirror is gonna be. So there's actually proper, I'm scared to do this, but <gasps> there is running water, guys. He actually said I can have a bath, um, but I'm not allowed to splash around. <laughs> So I asked you guys on Instagram stories and Twitter for your questions, and these are a few of them. So Sarah asks, how did you go about planning your renovation from finding builders to materials and time scale? So I feel like I kind of answered a bit of this earlier, but you sort of have to kind of plan, get your inspiration, have a look on Instagrams that you like, Pinterest, that kind of thing, or even just go out to the shops and have a look at colors of tiles or colors of carpet. Then you have to find your materials, and for us, I like to see things in person, so I know there's probably some great deals to be had online, but I wanna go and like sit in my bath kind of thing. So go to the different showrooms, go to like home base, being you, all those types of places, find your materials, get a quote for your materials, work out delivery times on those things as well. Things like kitchens, bathrooms, some of these things don't necessarily come next day delivery. There's no ASOS premiere here. So kind of get an idea of that. And then trades people, like I said, check a trade. We basically got all of our trades people off of there when we initially moved in and we didn't really have any contacts and we, had, we didn't have any problems with any of them or just use friends, families, recommendations, go on Facebook, does anyone know any carpenters in the area, that kind of thing. Um, our builder is actually someone who worked on my parents' place, and so we knew him from that. We knew he was a good guy, we know he does a good job, we know he does it for a good price, so definitely take other people's recommendations. And then timescale. Timescale is just one of those things that's very much dictated by other people. It's dictated by when you can get the materials delivered and also, Good tradespeople are busy, <laughs> they're so busy. That's kind of why we've had to like wait so long, to wait for the right people to become available. And that's fine, you wait, you get a good job, hopefully. Ruby asks, do you think you'll live in this house forever? Is there anywhere else you think you and Mark would move to? 
no, we will not live in this house forever. It's a flat, which is perfect for us now, but I really want kids and Mark really wants kids. We want a family. We'd love to have a garden. We've lived in flats for like almost six years now. None of them have had a garden or outside space. So we would love to make the jump to have a bit of outside space. So it's not our forever home. It will be really sad to leave here. We got engaged here. We had our wedding party like in that room over there. So it would be very bittersweet. And I think I would feel quite emotional about it, but I would love to have, oh my God, a garden, ha, oh, the dream. Nick asks, maybe some Instagram accounts slash photos that have inspired your interior journey. Um, so if I have got a bath on Pinterest, I might actually have one from like two years ago <laughs> when we first sort of moved in and we thought we'd be doing it sooner rather than later. Um, if I can find that, I'll link that down below for you. But I really love Instagram wise. There's two accounts that I follow. Mad About the House, who makes me want to paint every wall in, I think she always uses Farrow and Ball Downpipe, which is like a dark grey colour. Oh, love, love that. And also um, The Frugality, who's renovating her house as well. And I see her updates and I'm just like, yes. Like when you, the, the end is in sight. Like it's so exciting seeing the process and seeing how it literally looks like rubble at the beginning and then ends up into a lovely room. So definitely follow those two Instagram accounts, they're great. Lucky asks, which parts of the renovation are working out the most expensive, e.g. the suite, the labour, the flooring? Um, I got loads of questions about money and budget, completely understand. And I don't feel comfortable sharing the exact figure that we have spent on our bathroom because I feel like that is so changeable as to where you live in the world. Like, we don't live in London, but we live in Brighton and things are still pricey down here, especially when it comes to things like labour. So it really depends where you're based, it depends on the level of quality that you want of your finish, it depends on the tradespeople that you're using, it depends on your personal budget. Are you doing up a house as your forever house or are you doing up a flat as just like something that you're eventually going to move out of? You're not going to want to go for the most like high-end expensive finish so I don't feel comfortable giving the exact figure I mean it's a couple of like expensive bags don't get me wrong but in terms of things that are working out the most expensive I, mean, I didn't realize this before we started renovations but labor is really really quite pricey but it's pricey for a reason and especially things like plastering plumbing electrics things that I mean Mark and I can't physically do and um, so I'd say labor especially specialized labor is easily the most expensive part of any renovation but kind of rightly so i'd say the bathroom suite really surprised me there's some really good deals to be had out there especially when you're not like i said you're not buying the most amazing like high-end like super designer finish like you're going into basketball you're buying a bath you're getting an ikea sink i was really surprised actually i think we got a very good deal on the actual pieces in our bathroom and um, the one thing that is unexpectedly expensive and i didn't realize this before we moved in but like tiles are very pricey, flooring in general. I guess it usually takes up quite a big area. Again, you have to get people in to fit it. Um, so yeah, things like carpets and tiles and flooring, very surprisingly expensive. Celine asks, any tips of how to keep the price down? Um, so I feel like when we first moved in, this was something we really concentrated on. You know, we had a budget and we had to make it stretch and we had to buy a bed and all these other things. So I would say take people's help. Um, my dad, bless him, was here every weekend with us, helping us sand down things, helping us decorate, helping us strip off wallpaper. My mum would come and like make us lunch. It was just, it was so nice. My friends would come around, my sister would come around. So it was really like a whole community helped us. And again, we help them when they move. We help our grandparents when they move. Just getting in help is very handy there are always things that you can cut back on like in the kitchen we have nice appliances but we don't have like the best dishwasher and we don't have the best amazing oven that has one of those doors that goes underneath which i would love my mum has one of those and they're amazing so there's just ways of always like bringing the cost down inside we haven't got any fancy like drawers that come out you know those corner cupboards that have the fancy things inside we just didn't have any of those fancy things there's always things you can like cut back on things like in our bathroom as well we haven't bought a new towel radiator like we definitely could have we could have got one of those really nice ones that you see on pinterest but we we're like you know what our towel radiator is pretty good as it is so they've just plumbed it back in so there's always things that you can you can look at your budget you can get your quotes in get your labor quotes in get your materials quotes in look at it and then be like, okay, can we afford this? And if not, where can we claw back? Jvu asks, if the room were bigger, what would you have added? So our bathroom is a perfectly fine size. When I lived in a student house, I had a bathroom that was like 
the size of this. It was absolutely <laughs> insane. I'm not sure I'll ever live in a place that has a bathroom that big. But if the room was bigger, I 100% would have gone for a roll top bath. I think that would look awesome, but we just didn't have the space and it would have meant like having to dust like round the back. It just, it wouldn't have worked, um, but that would be amazing. Elsie asks, is there anything you really wanted to do but Mark wasn't on board with, or is it the other way round? No, it is definitely that way round of me wanting to do mad things and Mark being like, Anna, what Pinterest account have you been looking at today? <laughs> Absolutely no way are we doing that. Mark is very good, he's very, he's very common sense, and so I really wanted to paint the walls like practically black. Like I said, I'm into this and mad about the house. Not black, but this very deep gray. And Mark's like, we're not gonna live here forever. One day we're gonna have to sell this on, and I feel more comfortable with a blue rather than something that could be interpreted as black on the wall. Um, I also really wanted, um, you know, like the plug sockets that are like matte black. I just think they're so cool. I absolutely love them. The Frugality has them in her place. Mark was like, nah, not gonna happen. So he's definitely the one who reigns me in but rightly so. Helen says, hi Anna, I'm having a major case of the I don't know where to start when it comes to getting my own bathroom done. I feel ya. Um, tips on taking those first steps, having never done anything like this before, would be greatly appreciated. So yeah, like I said earlier, it's all about kind of working out what you want, finding the materials, finding the tradespeople to do it, and then just doing it. You just have to do it with these things. I've got faith in you, Helen. You can do it for sure. Um, one thing I perhaps would suggest is when you're so overwhelmed and there's so much to do, it's kind of hard when you sit there and you're like, oh, we, we need a new light fitting. Oh, and we need to look at taps. All these things are very overwhelming, perhaps per weekend. And this is kind of what we did. We're like, okay, well, this weekend we're gonna look at bathroom suites. Or this weekend, let's go to Ikea and see what they've got there. Kind of per weekend, try and tick off one task from your list and you'll get there in the end. Okay, we're almost there, but Tom says, hey, me and my fiance watch all your videos. That's so cool. Hi, Tom and his fiance. We're gonna be moving out into our own place for the first time in the next few months. Congratulations. If you could give one bit of advice that you would wish that someone gave you, what would it be? Um, I would say, if you wanna cry when you get the keys, that's completely fine and completely normal. Um, just know that it's not a race, it's not a sprint, it's kind of a marathon in a way. It's sort of never ending and if this thing just goes on for a couple of years, that's fine. If when you first move in you think, I, ca I can't live with this toilet, I just can't live with this toilet, I can't live with this sink, you'll be surprised at how quickly you get used to it. I mean, it was at the point where I was having to crouch down in front of a mirror to like do my cleansing each night, which just isn't really that fun, but you just get used to it. So don't panic. If you haven't got the budget, it's okay. It takes time to save up. It takes time to find the right builders, to find inspiration, to find the right wallpaper, all of those things. Just like, don't rush. That definitely wasn't one bit of advice, was it? That was like a full on kind of rant. But basically, just chill, relax, breathe. It will get there in the end. Um, yeah, good luck with it. Machiko's question really made me laugh because it was all in capital letters. It said, how did you stand it this whole time? <laughs> which kind of goes back to my other um, answer actually. You get used to things, like we're very adaptive as humans and things become routine very quickly. You soon start to not even see like the black mold in the bath, it's completely fine. And actually when it comes to having the builders in, I think people think, oh my God, like working from home with the builders, that must be so stressful. I actually quite like them, I have really good chats with them. <laughs> They're great company. Um, because of the work that we're having done, it hasn't been particularly noisy work. And yeah, it's actually been quite nice having them. It's gonna be really weird when they leave. And that moment, there's like a day where all of a sudden it changes. And for us, that was yesterday. All of a sudden it was like, oh my God, we have a new bathroom, practically. Like it's so almost there. And that feeling is so addictive and catching. And yeah, it's so worth it for that. So the final question comes from Emmeline and she said, what is your favorite song the workers have sung so far? Which I love because if you've been following my Instagram stories, you will know that they love to sing, love to sing. Um, I really enjoyed when they sung No Doubt, um, Don't Speak, because that is mine and Lily's like favorite karaoke song. And I was desperately trying to like film a clip of them singing it to send it to her. But every time I started to film, they, um, they stopped, but yeah. Oh. I love them. So I'm guessing this is quite a long video. So if you've made it to here, thank you so much. And um, there'll be part two up in a couple of weeks when hopefully we will have a new functioning bathroom and a horse stairs and landing that are fully decorated and I can't wait. If there's any more questions that you want answering, pop them below and I'll answer them in that video. But yeah, I am 
over the moon and it's quite fun to make videos like this actually like I said it's just really where my head is at at the moment so it's always fun to make videos that you feel passionate about so I hope you enjoyed this if there are any of you out there who are currently renovating good luck we can do this and if there's any of you who are out there who are just about to move into a place that needs doing up good luck you can do this see you in three years time um, but thank you for watching next week i've got a favorites video coming up and also on my blog this week there has been three new posts one about this eyeshadow palette that i can't get enough of one of my long haul kind of essentials because now i really have done long haul and then also one about leather trousers and ross geller so if you missed any of those i will again link those down below for you thank you so much for watching and i'll see you back on sunday with a new video bye